Art is a diverse set of activities that aim to express. What that expression includes may be emotional or contain no message at all. What medium the art is expressed through may be performative or pictorial. The task of modern art historians is to examine the different forms of expression and detail what message, if there is one, the artist is trying to convey. In many ways, physicists take on the roles of art historian while nature takes on the role of artist. Through the performance of colliding galaxies, the physicists figure out that the universe is creating new life through X-ray binaries or shock-heated gas. On a more human scale, a levitating rock tells us the power and the strength of electromagnetism. And on the smallest scales, physicists at the Large Hadron Collider attempt to find out what message the universe is sending through its performance of scattering processes. Through this, one can see that physics at scales is important, and today I want to specialize in physics at the largest scale, known as the cosmological scale. Cosmology is the study of the universe at the largest scales, the scales of which the entire uni observable universe. As a physicist and an art historian of nature's art, I want to look at its earliest known pieces, the remnants of an expansion the universe took when it was but just a baby. At this time, the universe was a young and violent place where collisions took place between every particle at temperatures too hot for us to imagine, and all of a sudden, once the universe was too large for such violence to still occur, it stopped leaving behind what appeared to be a bland picture of a once complicated past. In 1948, two cosmologists named Ralph Alpher and Robert Herman predicted that such a surface, though it was never seen before, should exist, and that its temperature should be between 5 and 28 Kelvin, which measures the degrees Celsius above zero. This work went relatively unnoticed until the early 1960s, when a few physicists, Robert Dick and Yakov Zildovich, just rediscovered the possibility of the background radiation from the earliest times in the universe. But before they were able to measure it for themselves, two radio astronomers, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, by a happy accident, rediscovered it themselves near Bell Laboratories. This of course stirred up some drama as Penzias and Wilson were not looking for this radiation. Instead, they simply wanted to observe galaxies and radio frequencies. When they completed their instrument, they noticed a faint contamination of their signal. They thought this was due to some form of local contamination, but after a systematic analysis of nearby sources, they determined that it could only have come from space. These two radio astronomers went on to win the Nobel Prize in 1978, and consensus was formed in the 1970s that this background radiation of constant temperature 2.7 Kelvin was the remnants of the Big Bang. The story at this time was that the universe was infinitely small and infinitely heavy, and began to suddenly expand, and during this expansion particles such as photons began to form and scatter off of each other as if they were contained in a very small box. As the universe continued to grow, these light particles grew too far apart to scatter anymore, and the remaining remnants were a black body of radiation of constant temperature 2.7 Kelvin. The term black body is a physical body that absorbs all light. When it is at a constant temperature, it emits light and its emission depends only on the temperature of the body itself. This is actually seen by people who bend metals. When it is heated up, it emits a nice orange color and it tells us the temperature the body is at you know not to touch it. Thermal equilibrium means it is at a constant temperature. We know that objects come to constant temperature when they've been in contact with another body for long enough. Consider a cup of coffee. When you hold the cup of coffee, eventually the coffee will give off some heat to you, and your hand will feel hot. Or when an ice cube is being held, you give off heat to the ice cube and it will start to melt. Your hand will also begin to feel cold. Objects in contact will thermalize and come to the same temperature. It stands to reason, then, that if an object is in thermal equilibrium, it is likely to have been in contact with all constituent parts for a long enough time. But this cannot be the case with the cosmic microwave background. Instead, we know the cosmic microwave background was formed 13 billion years ago, yet it is 96 billion light years across. If we believe fundamental physics of special relativity to be true, no information can travel faster than light. So it is impossible for the cosmic microwave background to have come into thermal equilibrium. They 
could not talk to each other. This is known as a fine-tuning problem. Essentially, the universe by pure luck seems to have produced a totally uniform art piece. The solution to this, as proposed by Alan Guth in 1981, was the theory of inflation, which purports that the universe underwent a period of exponential expansion of space, which lasted for a small fraction of time. Zero, point, followed by 32 zeros, one. At this time, there was a particle called the inflaton that decayed into all these particles we know and love today, such as photons. This was how they were able to talk to each other. When particles become involved, so does quantum physics. And in quantum physics, not everything is exact. Rather, there are fluctuations in physical quantities. And because space itself is expanding, so would these fluctuations. Here is what that means in two concrete examples. First, the constant temperature would have had fluctuations in it and it would grow until we hit the cosmic microwave background. This means the temperature is not perfectly constant. Instead, there are small variations in temperature. As it turns out, there are. And today, we have with Planck observations, our best image of the art piece the universe left behind from its young and violent stage. And it is a complicated mess, as we could imagine. Yet, all these variations in colors correspond to simple quantum fluctuations in the temperature of the order 10 to the minus 5 degrees Celsius. Second, the universe was not only isotropic in temperature, but also isotropic in particles. That means no matter where you looked in the universe, everything looked exactly the same. This is clearly not true anymore. Look to your left and to your right. Things look different. Look to space. Earth and Mars are separated by empty space. And as it turns out, the examination of the earliest known art pieces of nature tells us why. We are nothing but enlarged quantum fluctuations of the earliest times in the universe. And so, we come to quite a humbling picture of ourselves in the grand scheme of things. The universe performed crazy collisions in a violent and young history, and produced an art piece that would rival Jackson Pollock. And yet, upon close inspection of its properties, we find out truths about physics at the smallest scales, appearing at large scales, and how random, seemingly accidental, fluctuations in space and time produced us. This was John Staunton, and I hope you enjoyed my presentation for Arts and Astro 2020.